Acupuncture is a 3,000-plus-year-old traditional Chinese therapy that involves inserting tiny needles into various vital energy points throughout the human body. Hundreds of these acupoints connect to 12 main qi life energy channels known as meridians. Each meridian is related to and named after a specific organ or function, the main 12 being the lung, colon, stomach, spleen, heart, intestine, triple warmer, pericardium, bladder, gallbladder, kidney, and liver meridians. Through skillful application and combination of acupoint needles, blockages of qi flow are overcome and healthy energy balance is restored to the body. Dr. Irvin Laszlo wrote, Many traditions worldwide have perceived the manifestation of consciousness through various levels of energetic frequencies. Eastern healing techniques continue this holistic tradition where disease is treated as a blockage or imbalance in the flow of a life force energy. Almost all non-Western approaches to medicine speak of a life force, such as the prana of the Indian tradition and the chi of the Chinese tradition. These forces are said to vivify a biological entity at birth and to withdraw on its death. The importance of very low energy electromagnetic fields associated with the body's energy flows is being recognized and progressively measured. These energy flows take particular pathways that Eastern medicine has long identified as the meridians. Just as the arterial system carries blood around our bodies, such meridians are deemed to carry both the subtle and the electromagnetic component of these energies. Around our bodies and distributed along these meridians are approximately a thousand points that are the nodes for such energies where they may be accessed via the skin. The Chinese tradition of acupuncture uses extremely fine needles inserted painlessly into the skin at these points to free energy blockages, accelerate wound healing, control pain, and stimulate energy flow in the meridian system. Using Curlian electrography, acupuncturist Dr. Peter Mandel showed that he could stimulate various acupoints to cause bigger, brighter coronas to appear at other nodes along the same meridian. By needling tonification points on one foot and sedation points on the other, he could increase the luminescence of one foot while nearly extinguishing the other. One of his patients with a sprained ring finger displayed a huge reddish corona emanating from the sprain but after just a few minutes of acupuncture treatment, it shrunk back to normal size and color and healed completely within the day. Lynn McTaggart wrote, Research has also shown that pain-killing endorphins and the steroid cortisol are released through the body when the acupuncture points are stimulated at low frequency, and important mood-regulating neurotransmitters like serotonin and norepinephrine at high frequency. Yet other research has proved that acupuncture can cause blood vessels to dilate and increase blood flow to distant organs in the body. Other research demonstrates the existence of meridians as well as the effectiveness of acupuncture for a variety of conditions. Orthopedic surgeon Dr. Robert Becker, who performed a great deal of research on electromagnetic fields in the body, designed a special electrode recording device which would roll along the body like a pizza cutter. After many studies, it showed up electrical charges on the same places on every one of the people tested, all corresponding to Chinese meridian points. Modern medicine has long been aware of an electrical phenomenon present in the body known as the current of injury. When skin tissue undergoes trauma or microscopic damage, such as when skin cells are pierced by acupuncture needles, they begin leaking electrically charged ions into the surrounding tissue. This creates a weak electrical battery-like charge which stimulates a healing response from the nearby cells. In the 1950s, Japanese Dr. Yoshio Nakatani and German Dr. Reinhold Wall both independently verified electronically that within a few millimeters of each acupoint, there is a significant decrease in the skin's electrical resistance compared with non-acupoints. They also proved that there are measurable differences between healthy and unhealthy patients' overall resistance levels. In 1971, New York Times reporter James Reston became a firm believer in acupuncture's efficacy. While traveling around China, James became ill with appendicitis, and doctors performed a complete appendectomy using only acupuncture for an anesthetic. In the popular article he wrote afterwards, James mentioned interviewing one brain tumor patient who was eating oranges and conversing with him while his skull was wide open. Some people have claimed acupuncture's analgesic properties are merely an expression of the placebo effect, but this has been proven erroneous 
due to the fact that many animals have also responded to the analgesic properties of acupuncture, not to mention that it works 70% of the time, compared to the placebo effects 30%. Dr. Irvin Laszlo wrote, The effectiveness of acupuncture for pain relief is now supported by a growing number of studies. Neuroscientist Bruce Pomeranz was the first to show that acupuncture triggers the production of endorphins, our body's natural feel-good hormones. The use of functional MRI technology to scan brain patterns by a number of researchers, including Zhang He Cho at the University of California, Irvine, has shown in recent years that acupuncture desensitizes pain controls in our brain. Indeed, so powerful is its ability to reduce pain that it has been used to enable open-heart surgery to be performed without anesthetic. University of Toronto Dr. Bruce Pomeranz discovered by activating small myelinated nerve fibers, acupuncture sends impulses to the spinal cord, midbrain, pituitary, and hypothalamus, resulting in endorphin release. When Pomeranz pretreated rats with naloxone, an endorphin blocker, acupuncture's pain-relieving properties disappeared, suggesting that endorphin release caused by acupuncture stimulus is the key mechanism behind its pain-relieving effects. In 1992, at the Necker Hospital in Paris, Dr. Jean-Claude Darras and Dr. Pierre de Vernajoul explicitly confirmed the existence of the meridian system with their famous experiment. They injected harmless radioactive tracers into acupoints of 300 volunteers, then tracked their migration using gamma cameras. Whenever tracers were injected to non-acupoints, they quickly dispersed and disappeared, but when injected into actual acupoints, the tracers migrated steadily along the traditional Chinese meridian paths. They also found that the tracers moved more slowly around diseased organs and faster around healthy organs, confirming the notion of illness resulting from obstructions in the body's qi flow. David Icke wrote, This is a computer-enhanced version of an image produced at the Necker Hospital in Paris in a joint study with the cytology laboratory at the military hospital. They injected a radioactive tracer into acupuncture points and then took the photograph with a gamma camera to see where it would go. It followed the pattern of the acupuncture meridian system. Not only does this confirm the existence of the meridian network, which modern medicine has long dismissed and ridiculed, but the study also established another crucial fact. It found that the slower the energy, or qi to the Chinese, passed through the meridians, the less healthy was the person involved. When the energy was flowing at optimum speed and balanced, the subject was in good health. How can this be? Because the energy, the qi, is information that includes details about a problem or imbalance, and the instructions on how to respond. If people were taking too long to tell you that a problem existed, and too long to pass your response to those at the scene, what would happen? The problem would not get fixed, and would probably worsen as a result. This is one reason why people who are ill are more vulnerable to other illnesses. The qi also carries instructions to maintain balance and harmony, and again, when this communication is affected, so is the balance and harmony, and the body becomes diseased. In 2003, the World Health Organization assessed and compiled a list of over 100 ailments for which acupuncture treatment has proven effective. Just a small sampling of these include allergies, arthritis, depression, dysentery, dysmenorrhea, epigastralgia, headache, hypertension, hypotension, labor pain, leukopenia, lower back pain, nausea, neck pain, sciatica, sprains, and stroke. In acupuncture, there is the concept of the little man in the ear, which is an acupoint diagram of the whole human body that fits within the ear and affects meridians connecting 40 organs and systems throughout the body. In reflexology, there are similar acupressure concepts and diagrams of the feet and hands showing how points in these extremities connect to organs and systems throughout the body. This once again demonstrates the holographic nature of our bodies and matter in general, the part reflected in the whole, and the whole reflected in all parts. David Icke wrote, How can reflexology and acupuncture find points throughout the human body that relate to all the organs and other functions? How can you massage or insert a needle at a point on the foot, hand, or ear and affect the liver, stomach, or heart? It seems crazy if you accept the official explanations of the human form, but it makes perfect sense when you know the body is a hologram. Remember that one of the amazing properties of holograms 
is that every part is a smaller version of the whole. Far from being a mystery that the whole body can be found in the foot, hand, or ear, it is the way it must be if the body is a hologram. An entire body can be grown from a single cell, because every cell is a smaller version of the whole, and contains all the information contained in the whole. Ishtak Bentoff wrote, We human beings consider ourselves to be made up of solid matter. Actually, the physical body is the end product, so to speak, of the subtle information fields which mold our physical body, as well as all physical matter. These fields are holograms, which change in time and are outside the reach of our normal senses. This is what clairvoyants perceive as colorful egg-shaped halos or auras surrounding our physical bodies.